Hi everybody, welcome back to Project Spatial. I am Katie Scheuer and I am here to increase your spatial impact. And today we are doing that by digging into the GIS manager position. So this is the final video of this series. If you have not checked out these videos, I will leave them all in the description down below. So a GIS manager position really is at the last stage of a GIS development, but stage five is really, it's you're building your strategy. So you kind of need to have this strategy being built throughout the entire GIS deployment. But when you get to a stage five, when you get past the point of having a small GIS department that is just part of something else, so it's part of your IT, it's part of your engineering, it's part of public works, wherever you have them stored, um, you want to build a GIS manager position to be able to take it to the next level. A GIS manager is there to blend in your business structure with your GIS deployment. So typically you already have all of the data that you need. You already have the integrations between your GIS data and your workflows that you're working through. You already have power users and people that are utilizing your GIS and you've really built it into your business structure to the best that you can, but you might not be taking full advantage of it because you don't know what you don't know. So you hire a GIS manager so that way they can take care of the team, make sure that they're working the best that they can and make sure that they have priority on projects, they have um, leadership goals, growing and developing amongst themselves and the people are being taken care of. But then you also bring in a manager so you can take care of the business side. Somebody that can sit in all of the business meetings and say, yes, we can insert GIS here to make this more efficient. But no, this would be a better project for something else. Actually, we, our team can't handle that. We need to hire a consultant for that. Being able to plug GIS into things that you wouldn't naturally think GIS would fit into as just a general person that has a general knowledge of it. They are there to help make sure that you are getting the most out of your investment in your team, the most out of your investment in your data, and the most out of your investment in your software. So what skills does a GIS manager need? Well, they are going to be managing people, so you need people skills. You also need to be willing to sit and do a lot of meetings. So you're going to have to have a pulse on every single department and what they're doing because GIS is a big picture system. And if you don't understand the flow of work throughout the company, if you don't understand what everybody's individual roles are through the company, you are not going to be able to put that big picture together, which brings all of the data together. You also need to be able to speak tech and be able to speak in the tech industry. So you can't be a GIS manager if you don't understand anything about tech. Now, do you need a code? No, you really probably don't need to code. You can hire people to do that. You can get consultants to do that if that's not something that is a skill set within your team. But you do need to understand when you need to code. And is that something that makes sense to your business problem? Is that something that's going to fit your business need? You also need to be a great project manager, a team leader, and have all of those wonderful skills that bring together a great team. You also need to learn how to advocate for your team and make sure that they are getting the development that they need to stay up to date with the trainings and all of the information that always comes at us at 100 miles a minute. So that way they can feel developed and feel like they are very knowledgeable and secure in their position. So another position that you might see out there along with uh, GIS managers is a GIS coordinator. I think the GIS coordinator is probably more prevalent in the US in the public sector especially. And the GIS coordinator is a person that typically and I'm gonna quote this typically from the people that I know that are GIS coordinators, are not people that are managing people, they're managing the system. So a lot of counties that are small or cities that are small, they might not have enough people to sustain a large GIS system and be able to have a bunch of people on payroll but they need somebody that's going to coordinate that system throughout the entire company. And so they hire a GIS coordinator where it's their job to make sure that the system is taken care of and the system's maintained, but they aren't necessarily taking care of a bunch of people, which means that they're not necessarily a manager. Now you can have both positions that I just described under either of these two titles. So be careful, make sure you read the job descriptions if you're seeing a posting for this, 
or if you're having somebody approach you because typically at this level you will have somebody approach you to be a manager you want to make sure that you fully understand what they're looking for do they have a large team that they're trying to manage or is it really just they need somebody to come in and make the most of the system and try to get into the business processes and lead maybe some consultants or lead you know, a smaller GIS team. Now, if you're a GIS coordinator and you're leading a small team, you're probably going to be in the data yourself. So this can be really good for somebody that's an analyst where you don't really want to take care of a bunch of people, but you want to be able to step up into more of a project management level skill set, and you are looking for that like extra little business development and understanding the business more. So this is kind of an advancement that you can take as a coordinator, being able to manage the entire system and get out of just being in analysis and looking at the individual problems, but looking at the bigger picture of everything. So as a manager, what are some salaries that you can consider? Now I did pull these off a glass door and remember they are just like all the other videos. It's for a US average. So you gotta take it with a grain of salt. Always check the areas that you're looking in and know what your value is there. So for a coordinator, you're looking at about a $63,000 average ranging from 45 to 87. And then for a manager, you're looking at an 84,000 average with a range from 59 to 119. Why does a manager get paid more than a coordinator? People. <laughs> So typically a manager is going to get paid more because they're in a larger organization. So there's more pay levels that they can go through and because they're managing people, not data. That's kind of the biggest difference. And a lot of times coordinators are in the public sector and in the US in general, the public sector doesn't get paid as much as the private sector, but that can be changing. So just don't throw out all the public sector job. I started out in the public sector, you can find those positions, but sometimes they are a little bit harder depending on the area that you live in. If you are thinking about becoming a GIS manager or you're just starting on your GIS journey and you feel like this is the natural progression for you, I want you to think over the management position really carefully because it is a completely different skill set in a lot of ways than a GIS analyst or a GIS tech. So when you start as a GIS tech, you are building those skills. You're really coming in and just trying to learn as much as you possibly can. When you get into that analysis position, you're now solving business problems, you're creating analysis, and you're contributing all of the knowledge that you have gained. And if you get into a management position straight after that, it can be a little frustrating because now you're no longer dealing with the data, you're dealing with the people. And if that's something that you do not want to do, you want to stay in the tech portion of it, you want to build your skills, you want to be able to manipulate data, you want to be the best tech person that you can be, then management might not be for you and you might want to look at specializing in a particular thing and being a GIS specialist, or going into development if you really like code. I hope you guys really got value out of this. If you made it all the way, please give me a like and subscribe down below. I'd really love to hear your feedback on this like series completely um, down in the description. And if there's anything that I didn't cover that you would like to hear more about, I will see you guys soon. Bye.